Dear students, today in uh, the session that we have, we are going to study about effective speaking. We all somewhere have this desire in us that we should all be heard by people and as large a number of audience as we could have. That desire can only be fulfilled when we know that we have conscious efforts being put in by us while we speak. And today's session will guide us that how can we assure that we understand what are the nuances of effective speaking. So to look at it, as you can see in the slide, there are qualities of a confident speaker. And to begin with, I must share with you that the quality, first quality that we would want to discuss is that you have to be accurate. You have to have facts and the information that you speak about should be correct. The effective speaker should be credible as well. So if you are going to be speaking something like a news reporter speaks, uh, and if in case the news and the facts are not correct, you will probably not be interested in listening to the person. So you have to have the credibility. You have to be intelligent in making sure that you filter the information that you are giving out for your audience, who are actually the selected audience. You have to create content that is liked by people. It has to be that information has to be believable. So the, uh, the other quality of being a confident speaker is that it requires you to be a knowledgeable person about whatever topic you are going to be speaking about you must make sure you have done enough research and you know your content you know your subject and that's when you begin to start to speak and the last quality and the most important one is that just like you want to be an effective speaker there are several other people in the world outside who are actually competent enough to become an effective speaker so moving on I would here want to present to you that there are two types of speakers in the world. The first one who are actually the nervous people and the second one who are actually the liars because each one of us is nervous while we are preparing ourselves to speak in front of larger audience. No person, even if in case is the best speaker in the world, would not be having anxiety. There's no possibility for that. So how do you deal with the nervousness? In the, uh, for that matter, can we also say that we have antidotes for anxiety that you have? Yes, we can very much say that. So you have excitement. You, you must make sure that you are excited about what am I going to talk about in today's session or in any other speech that you're going to be getting an opportunity for. You must be authentic and you should have passion to speak. So when I talk about anxiety, you might have felt that many a times you feel that there is, uh, you're choking, you feel that there is sense of, uh, you know, you're, you're too fearful and sense of dread. You have shaky legs or shaky hands. If you're holding a paper, the paper seems to be moving as well with your shaky hands. Um, you feel that you're going to faint. You you might have wobbly legs and your heartbeat might be increasing. So how do you deal with all of this? Because an effective speaker will not have all these signs of, of being the nervous speaker. So the liars, let's look at it that how can we fake it until we make it. So to become an effective speaker, we must make sure that we remember new words and develop our vocabulary constantly every day. We learn some other words, uh, in, we add, our, uh, add some new words to our dictionary. We must also make sure that we listen to English. Uh, there are various audio and video materials that are available. Please make sure you watch good films which are actually uh, having English subtitles, which are, have, which are actually spoken in English. Uh, watch some good interesting interviews. That will help you catch up with the speed and also will help you develop your content. You must also practice. Uh, but when I say practice, do not try and memorize the content of your script. Uh, when you practice, it must come naturally to you. Your subject, should, you should have that much of an understanding that it almost appears as if you have a feel for that subject. You, Whatever you are speaking, it is out of your personal experience that you are going to be speaking about it. The next point that here I would talk about is voice modulation. Very important part of your speech. If in case I want to emphasize on something, I'll give it um, a, a louder tone, uh, I will use my pitch which is a little louder. If I want to say something sensitive, I'll be very soft. 
just like I told you, right? So please make sure you observe all the good speakers around the world. They have amazing quality of knowing when to have voice modulation perfectly given and delivered in the speeches. Keep your speech very short and sweet. Make sure whatever you are speaking, people are not wanting to listen to you for longer hours. So keep it short and sweet. Connect with your audience. What are the different ways in which you could connect with your audience? You could actually use your non-verbal expressions, use of hand gestures, use of facial expressions like eyebrows, eye contact, and using a little bit of humor and wit with that to connect with the audience will help you. Then the other thing is that you must make sure that you emphasize and repeat the main motive of your speech. Now there is one example that here I would like to present to you. We know about it that many of us prefer to have a warm up when we are preparing our body for exercises. Just like that when you try and speak, give, deliver a speech, how is it that we can have some exercises for our throat? Please watch the video and learn and try and practice while you are watching. Stand up and uh, make sure that you are practicing. Warm up your voice. Actually, let me show you how to do that. Would you all like to stand up for a moment? I'm going to show you the six vocal warm-up exercises that I do before every talk I ever do. Anytime you're going to talk to anybody important, do these. First, arms up. Deep breath in and, and sigh out. Like that. One more time. <sighs> Very good. Now we're going to warm up our lips and we're going to go ba, 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 ba. Very good. And now, just like when you were a kid. Now your lips should be coming alive. We're going to do the tongue next with exaggerated la, 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 la. Beautiful. You're getting really good at this. And then roll an R. That's like champagne for the tongue. <laughs> Finally, and if I can only do one, the pros call this the siren. It's really good. It starts with we and goes to or. The we is high, the or is low. So you go, we, or, we, or. Fantastic. Give yourselves a round of applause. Take a seat. Thank you. <laughs> Next time you speak, do those in advance. Now, let me just put this in context to close. This is a serious point here. This is where we are now, right? We speak not very well into people who simply aren't listening in an environment that's all about noise and bad acoustics. I have talked about that on this stage in different phases. What would the world be like if we were speaking powerfully to people who are listening consciously in environments which were actually fit for purpose? Or to make that a bit larger, what would the world be like if we were creating sound consciously and consuming sound consciously and designing all our environments consciously for sound. That would be a world that does sound beautiful, and one where understanding would be the norm. And that is an idea worth spreading. Thank you. Thank you. So as we have seen that uh, to be an effective speaker, there are various strategies one could use. After the warm-up that you have had, we must look at the five steps how we can make sure that we have our speech designed in a way where our presence is felt by the audience. So first thing that we could do is we must make sure that while we get on the stage, we must give a feeling that we own the stage. I am the person who knows it all and I am confident enough that I will take control of this very opportunity that has been given to me. So while you begin your speech, please make sure that you tell them that what you are going to talk about. So your, um, you know, I remember that what could be a three, uh, three pointers, three steps of uh, making sure that how do you deliver the speech. So the first thing is that you tell your audience what you're going to tell them. The second step would be that you tell them, tell them whatever you are telling, trying to tell them in your script. The third thing would be tell them what you just told them, which means you reiterate your point, re-emphasize, and that's how you will be able to make sure that whatever claims you are making, you are successfully delivering that content. 
The next point is that you must make sure you are inspiring in your speech, but you are not trying, you are not standing there to preach others. So, for an inspirational message to be given, it must have, it could be your personal experience, it could be quotations that you could use, it could be statistical information that you could use. That will help you relate with your audience, right? We just talked about how do we relate, what are the various possibilities of relating with the audience. So when I say that you relate with the audience, you, you might just choose to use your hand gestures, you might make use of stage, you might move uh, towards the front, move towards the back. Use as much as possible their experiences, share your experiences. The last point and significant point here would be that end with a success story. You must make sure that you have hope on which you leave your audience. Your uh, audience will always keep those things in mind.